Hey guys, several of you have uh, heard me use the term naughty bucket when we're talking when I was talking about particularly difficult locks. And for those of you who don't know, a naughty bucket is the place that you put locks that resist your efforts to picking. Of course, the other side of that is if you ever hope to improve, get better, you have to go into the naughty bucket to pick something out to learn something new. So I thought I'd do a, as quick a review as I can of what's inside of the Lock, Lab, Lock Lab's naughty bucket. And I'll show you the ones that I consider impossible for me to pick first. Uh, first, of course, is an Abloy 340. No recorded successful pickings, at least uh, on YouTube. Uh, very difficult lock. And the same family, Abus has come up with a couple of them. We have the 8950 on the left. It's called the Plus. And then on the right is the Abus Granite, the insurance lock. Both of these also are disc detainer locks. Very difficult. And in fact, these two have the same core. Very difficult to pick. So I probably will never get around to those. Now the rest of these locks I consider are somewhat possible. This is an Abus. I've seen um, another version of this one picked by... I am Shatton 360 fairly recently, a sm slightly smaller version, but I think the core is identical. It's a dimple lock, but a very complex dimple lock. We have dimples on the top, and then of course dimples on the bottom. They are not passive, they're all active pins, so you have to pick them all. Pretty difficult to pick, and I have not yet been able to get it beyond a fault set. I got a multi-lock here. It doesn't look like much, but in this one I've actually put the uh, MT5 Plus core. So you're going to have the active element. Uh, I have not yet been able to even get a fault set on this one, but perhaps sometime in the future we'll get at it. I got a Berg Vector that Adrian Weber gave me uh, when I visited him in Germany. A massive lock and pretty old. The bidding, it's a standard pin tumbler. Bidding doesn't look like it would be too difficult. Uh, I have come very close to picking this one. Got probably a thousand fault sets, but this tough old lock has not given it up to me yet. I have an unusual lock here. This is a Sargent, actually a Sargent Kiso. Doesn't look like much, just a regular old lock, right? Until you take out the key, and you notice we got some pretty wild dimples to deal with here, even on the edge. I have no idea, I have not even ever even tried to pick this one yet, because I'm, I'm, I'm positive it's beyond my capability. That's why it lives in the naughty bucket. I've got a really cool old Cleveland four-way lock here that I got from Old Fast 911. He sent it to me probably as a challenge, but uh, it is one of the very few cross locks that are manufactured in the United States. It's the original key. He sent me this and two other keys just in case I wanted to, I don't know, uh, impression it or something. Still works beautifully despite being, I don't know, 80 years old, 75. Pretty old lock. I've got a new lock here. This is a new Chinese lock. Pretty cool. And I had this sent to me by Wang Chai 97 Peter out in California. He'd been watching the Chinese locks that we were butchering. And he says, hey, I've got something that might give you a little bit more of a challenge. And to look at it, it is obviously a little higher quality. But when you look at the pinning, you can see we have two sliders to deal with. And it looks like five or six sliders on each side. Again, this one probably is beyond my capability right now, but I'm going to get it someday. I've got a Ruko 2 here from the Caveman 1966. No key came with this one. I've probably invested 25 hours in trying to pick this. Never even got a fault set. This is just the most stubborn Ruko on the planet Earth. And Caveman, this thing better actually work someday. Okay, to get that was my padlocks. Now let's take a look at some of the other locks. Um, I have a really good assortment here of uh, the ASA combi locks. And this was sent to me by Richard Melker, long distance. Now these are pinned up a little bit differently. These come uh, usually six pin, and then they also have an active sidebar. So you have to pick a pretty good six pin, almost like a Ruko or Asa, and then you have to pick the five sliders on the side, and you have to rotate it a lot like the Medico. He sent four with no key, and then one with a key. So this is the family of keys that we're looking at, or family of locks. And you're going to see I've got some more like this in my naughty bucket as well that have the same sliders on the side. In fact, I'll cover those I'll cover those next. I have a Primus lock. Looks easy, right? Looks like a normal Schlage. In fact, it is a Schlage. But we have to deal with these sliders on the side. So we have the top pins to deal with 
and then we have the sliders on the side to deal with. So not an easy lock. I've gotten a fault set on this one, this Primus, a few times, but uh, no, no luck yet, guys. I don't know what we're having a little trouble with the focus today. Okay, that's the Primus. I have a Marx. Um, this is a former Scorpion lock. Um, used to be called the Scorpion. It's a six pinner, but again, we have the uh, sliders on the side that we have to deal with. I've gotten a fault set on this one too, but no successful picking yet. This is going to be the one that I target next. When I head overseas, I'm going to carry this one and try to focus on it on this next trip overseas. I have some triovings. By the way, this is from, um, I think it was Ed Smiley or Mr. E. Sermon. Honestly, I can't remember, so I'm going to give both of you guys credit. It's a great lock, and it was brand new in the box. Mr. E. Sermon also sent me some triovings. Uh, I have managed to pick this one time, but never on camera. Uh, in fact, it was this one. These two I've never been able to successfully pick. So, I'm going to get it on camera someday. Just not, not right now. Okay, we got the standard selection of multi-locks. This is a really old multi-lock. There's what the bidding looks like. And I have managed to pick this one time, only one time, probably by accident. I can't take credit until you open it more than once. I've got a Zeiss here. No key, six pinner. I'm sorry, another multi-lock. Again, no opening on this one, not even a fault set. So I need to invest a little bit more time in, uh, in some multi-lock. I've got an assortment of Cabas here. This is a Caba 8. I'll set these down. This is a Caba 8. Brand new. Bought this on eBay. It's got 8 pins to deal with. I've gotten a fault set out of this. Never got it picked. I have two uh, Caba 20s here. This one is from Mr. Eserm, I believe. Yeah, Mr. Eserm. And this was a fairly recent one he gave me. I already had one just like it. The only difference is that this one came off of something at one time. And the other one has a, looks like a vehicle, it's got a little shutter in there. But it's the same lock, same complex pinning, never come close to picking either one of these things. I have a, a ISO, and this is a, a ISO 8, pretty wild pinning on this one, it is a dimple lock. So we've got to deal with the active pinning on the side, we have the normal pins, and then on the edge, we all also have to deal with those. Not an easy lock. Never even come close. I've got an unnamed lock here. It's completely generic, no marking of any kind. And I got this one, I believe, from Duction. Yep, got this offline. And the reason I put this up here, I have picked... Come on, camera. There we go. I have picked something similar to this, if I can get it to focus. There we go. Look at the warding on that. We called this the wild-ass warding, and I have picked one similar, but I've never picked this particular one. And I think this is why. When you look at the bidding on this, it's just insane. And then you have to deal with this crazy wild ass warding. Yeah, someday I'm going to get it, but not yet. Okay, we have the Abus Classic. I don't know. I picked a few of these before, but this one in particular, again with the focus, uh, just doesn't want to cooperate. Uh, these Abuses are sometimes hard to get into, and maybe it's the pinning on this particular one. I don't know, but he's just not giving it up to me. Richard Melker also gave me this, I called it the Dijo lock, Dijo. Haven't seen anybody pick one of these on uh, YouTube. This is a 7-pin lock. Doesn't look like it would be too hard. I've gotten a lot of false sets, a lot of them, hundreds. But I've never managed to get a single opening on this, more or less on camera. I got this lock from Alex Blade. A lot of you might recognize this, and only a few people have ever opened these on YouTube. This is the EVA 3KS. Really a cool lock. It's a very unique key. Very, very difficult to open. So someday I hope to have the skill to get into this one. I have a DOM lock that Adrian Weber gave to me. This is, a, I believe, a DOM 5. It has an active element, so it's not too many pins. But then we have that active element to deal with. And we got the high, low, high, low on this. So pretty cool looking lock. Very challenging. Never come close on this thing yet. I have a really cool lock here from Robert G. 595. Again, it's a EVA. It's called the EVA Dual. I have not seen too many of these. This is a dual. Get it to. We have all sliders inside of there. I believe there are six on each side. Have not come close to picking this yet. But they're both. The, all the pins are going to be located on the top. So, yeah, 
the key goes in either way, but it doesn't like to be picked. I don't understand it. We have an Econ here. It's only six pins. I've opened many Econs before. Uh, I got this one from Adrian Weber. It, the, even the bidding doesn't look too crazy. But it has not yet yielded. But it will. We'll get to it. Got a Vilka. Uh, I've seen a couple of people open these. I think Zio opened one of these not too long ago. I've got a lot of hours invested in this particular Vilka. Uh, but it's not been very kind to me. It's got some pretty good bidding on it. But as far as Wilka goes, I don't think that this is unusual. I think they all have pretty wild bidding. No luck yet. Okay, we have an Elzit. This came from Robert G595 also from Hungary. Uh, it is a dimple lock, uh, but because of the way that the dimples are installed inside of there, the keyway really is frustrating trying to get around and get a feel. It's right down in, in between these two little mountains, so really difficult lock to pick. Have not come close on that one yet. Uh, this is basically an MT5 Plus, uh, except this one is made by Econ or Zeiss. Uh, you can see the technology is the same as uh, the multi-lock. Got the active element in the end, the laser cut, and then the pin in pin. Pretty difficult lock to pick. Haven't come close. I got an EVA DPI. Um, and when I look at this, I've tried to pick this many, many times. Look at that very constrictive keyway. Oh my god. People have picked them, one or two people on, on uh, YouTube. I don't know how they do it. Very long key, very tight, constricted, and paracentric keyway. I just don't know how they do it. I've never even come close on this. I will. I'll get it. I have a DOM 9. Uh, notice that Alex Blate has opened a couple of these, I think. I have never even come close. I bought this from a fellow on Lockpicking 101, and I regret. I just can't remember his name. I'm sorry. This is the older one, though, so theoretically, it's even easier to pick than some of the ones that Alex Blate has picked. Well, fellas, that's pretty much it. I only have one more lock, and this one also comes from Wang Chai 97, and this is the latest acquisition. The latest Chinese lock doesn't look like much, but when you look at the keys, we got uh, some bling going here. We got gold, we got silver, but it is a 11-pin key, and you got to look at the key to see it. 11 pins plus laser slider. So this lock, I don't even can't even begin to think about picking. Luckily, it's not pin and pin, but aside from that, that's the only thing going for it. Fellas, I'm sorry I've taken up uh, 12 minutes of your time, almost 13 minutes, but I wanted to let you know what's inside of the, the naughty bucket here in the lock lab. If you want to get better, though, keep your eye on your naughty bucket, because that's where you're going to have to go. Thanks, fellas. Stay safe. Stay legal.